Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to a new video. You might be familiar with the Encore CPU cooler. I know that Linus Tech Tips reviewed this CPU water cooling block few months ago. Basically you know that if we have a 9900K CPU is soldered however CPU has a quite high die if you compare it to an 8700K or 7700K and N-core CPU block is nothing else than just using a heat spreader and putting some very thin fins in the heat spreader as surface area and then use this as a cold plate to cool your CPU. That's the principle. Obviously they're not using an IHS. They have their own cold plate which is CNC manufactured and then cooling the CPU. And the same manufacturer of the N-Core now made the N-Lab IHS and also the N-Lab die. Both acrylic tools are made for perfect sanding or perfect lapping of IHS and CPU die. Once 9900K was released, I already published a video where I was showing that 9900K had a higher die than the previous 8700K. Therefore, the thermal solution was a little bit worse. Silicon has a worse thermal conductivity than copper. If you increase the silicon thickness, you also decrease the thermal conductivity. Therefore, we saw slightly worse temperatures with the 9900K than with the 8700K, even though they were using S-TIM or a soldered uh, thermal interface material, which means how you connect the heat spreader uh, to the CPU. In my official launch video of 9900K, I showed the thermal differences, also lapped the die, and today we were going to do the same, but with the NLAP die and NLAP IHS. Those acrylic tools should make it a little bit easier, also should make it a lot more precise. Therefore, the temperature result should be better. However, I also want to highlight and point out there's always a risk involved in such modifications, especially die lapping. It's probably the most hardcore and most risky CPU modification you can do right now. There is definitely a risk involved in killing your CPU if you send it down from like 0.6 millimeter to 0.4 millimeter. It's a significant decrease in stability of the die. Therefore, it could always happen that your die breaks. Also, we don't know yet what the long-term influence of liquid metal on a naked die without diffusion barrier is. I have no idea. I just want to highlight that if you're doing those modifications, do it on your own risk. Be aware that it's very likely that you can damage something. Starting off with the NLAP die. That is the acrylic tool which is used to lap a die. And it's very simple acrylic piece with a little bit of paint on it. At first I was a little bit confused and didn't really understand how this thing works. You have a scale on the front which is going from 0 always to 0.2 millimeter on the left on the right. Same on top and on bottom. And this tool can work because this is not completely even. The middle part of the acrylic right here is 0.2 millimeter higher than the outer part. And therefore every single red line also has 0.2 millimeter in height. If you start lapping, you will start lapping in the middle where basically is your zero point. And then you divide the red line and it spreads out and once you reach the outside then you lapped it down by 0.2 millimeter and it starts again at the next red line again in the middle starts to go out to the side and once you reach the complete outside again you reached 0.2 millimeter and yeah you have the scale on here and by this technique it should be possible to lap your IHS quite precisely. But I think the easiest way of understanding how it works is just that we start putting a CPU in it and test it. You can see I already have my 9900K on my table, already has been deleted, already has been applied liquid metal to it. I still have the residues of the glue on there, which I have to clean off. Also have to wipe off the liquid metal residues. I usually use acetone for it, works quite nicely and doesn't really attack your PCB. So it's pretty safe to use. I always do it that way. And because I already deleted this CPU and had been using it for quite a while, I also have performance data and then we can compare temperature values afterwards. quite easy to put the CPU in there. It doesn't have that high tolerances, which means it can easily fall back out. 
Unfortunately, there is nothing to keep the CPU in there to hold it in place. Yeah, I think I just will put some tape on the corner to fix the CPU. Yep, that's much better. CPU can't fall out and we can start. CPU is sitting inside the NLAP die tool and I also want to highlight that now that we're starting with the lapping process, first we will have to lap some parts of the acrylic. We have parts on top, bottom, left and right, which will first make contact with the sanding paper before the die itself makes contact to the sanding paper to get our zero. This will also help to prevent uneven lapping of the die that you have I don't know, stronger lapping on the corner itself. That should not happen anymore because you have a wider surface and it should be quite difficult to yeah, have an uneven lapping result. I also asked the manufacturing about the eight figure technique and he said that he would recommend not to use this technique. I will just follow his guidance because he obviously used this more often than I did. And he said to just move it left and right over the red bars and should lead to a better result. I will just trust him in this regard and we will test it. For lapping, I'm using this 3M micro finishing aluminum oxide film it's quite difficult to get this stuff online also using it with a little bit of distilled water for wet lapping or wet sanding if you don't get this stuff you can just use normal 600 or 800 grade uh, wet sanding paper which you should be able to find online or like in a diy store let's go And the very positive aspect about using this light 3M micro finishing film is that once you reach the die, you get this quite dark mark right here. And that should mean that we reached the die. Flipping around, you can see we just barely touched it right here in the middle. And you can also spot the red lines on the top right here. They're almost gone, which means that the first line is almost, almost gone and the first line equals 0.2 millimeter. If this was also gone, like the very end part right here, it would mean that we are going back to zero. Now you can see on the front side that the very left red line ends at about 0.14 and that's our zero for the moment. This also means if we want to now lower the die height by 0.2 millimeter, we just have to send it down until the next red line will be at the exact same spot again. Again, after a little bit more lapping, you can see one of the red lines is ending right here. And we've, if we add up what we just had on the left, the 0.06 millimeter plus what we have right here, which is 0.08, then we have about 0.14 millimeter, which we lapped so far. And we can compare the left side of the red line to the right side of the red line and also flip it around and see everything is pretty much equal. I hope it will be visible, but the second red line is about at the same point where the first red line originally ended and therefore we lapped down the CPU by 0.2 millimeter and I will reassemble it and test if we have a temperature improvement. Okay, we cannot proceed that fast. First, I started measuring the CPU to make sure that we really grinded down or lapped down the die by 0.2 millimeter and it was actually not the case. We note that a stock 9900K should have a die height of about 0.82 to 0.84 millimeter. That's what I always measured using this quite precise tool. And after the first lapping run, I had about 0.7 millimeter. And the reason for that could be once we start lapping the die and see that we're touching the middle of the chip itself, the chip is usually a little bit convex. And therefore we first start in the center and not also on the outside of the die. And that's why I think getting the zero 100% correctly and precise is not that easy. After measuring after the first run, about 0.7 millimeter. Then I decided to do a second lapping run and now I'm at about 0.618 millimeter and therefore should be pretty much 0.2 millimeter less than what we had originally. Now, of course, we also have to send down the IHS. It's the exact same principle when it comes to the NLAP tool, IHS version, just place the IHS in there. But we have to keep in mind that we have to lower the IHS more than the die. The die is lowered by 
around 0.2 millimeter right now. However, on the stock 9900K, we also have the indium layer in between the chip and the IHS, which has additional thickness of about 0.3 to 0.4 millimeter which means that in result the total height we have to send down the IHS is about 0.5 millimeter and that's what we're going to do right now. An easy method to detect if we grinded down the heat spreader sufficiently is to use a sheet of paper. You can see the sheet of paper right here has a thickness of about 0.08 millimeter if we round it up. And in this case I cannot push the paper in between IHS and PCB. And that means that the IHS has contact on the corner to the PCB itself. But what we want is that we have direct contact of the IHS and the middle of the PCB or the die. IHS has a stock thickness of 3.06 mm and that's our starting point. Place the IHS inside the NLAB IHS tool and I noticed that the IHS is sitting quite significantly lower than the corner of the tool which means that we have to first grind off some significant amount of acrylic that will be some work for sure. We also cannot fix the IHS inside the tool as we did with the CPU otherwise we would just grind off that part of the tape. This time starting with 180 wet sanding paper and the reason for that is that 0.5 millimeter is quite a lot on copper and will take a lot of time if you start with like 600 or 800 or even 1200 which is something you can use in the end for the perfect lapping on your CPU but for copper and 0.5 millimeter that's a significant amount of copper starting off with 180 240 would be better but I don't have it right here should be fine then changing to 600 in the end and yeah just removing 0.5 millimeter. Same process as with the CPU die, you see I started removing parts of the nickel layer of the IHS, you can see the copper through the IHS now using the scale on the left side again and should be able to grind it down by 0.5 millimeter. I decided to add my own little marker with a black pen and I first have to remove two complete red lines and then a little bit in addition and then I should end up with 0.5 millimeter according to the scale. And 15 to 20 minutes later I'm still one complete line away from the end result and it absolutely takes time and the reason for that is not only the copper I have to grind away but also the entire surface of acrylic which is constantly in contact with the wet sanding paper and that makes it even harder and I think it will take me probably another 10 minutes until I reach the final mark. 15 more minutes and I finally reached my markers, removed the black marks. Should be somewhere at about 0.5 millimeter. Let's measure and see what we got. Not bad. We have 2.604 millimeter as a result. Starting point was about 3.06 millimeter. Therefore, we removed about 0.45 millimeter, which is quite close to what we try to achieve and I think should work nicely. Unfortunately, I noticed something that is far from great. If you check the middle area right here, that there is a small part on the corner which is a little bit elevated, like, I don't know, 0.5 millimeter thick just on the edge right here. Not sure if you, if, you, if you can see that. And this small elevated part of acrylic left those mark on the heat spreader. And that's something you definitely don't want. We have some significant scratches inside the top part of the IHS and that's not cool. Time to talk about results and conclusion. I reassembled CPU, put it back into the system. I saw temperature improvement by about two to three degrees Celsius, which is expected by lowering the die by about 0.2 millimeter. We could go further and send it down by another 0.2 millimeter and therefore decrease the height by 50%, resulting in a total die height of 0.4 millimeter. I wouldn't go further than that simply because that's also the die height we have on an 8700K, 7700K, 6700K and those are very thin dies. And I'm not sure if we have a sanded die that has definitely some small grooves in there if it tends to break easier, if you put some tension on the die if it may break. Therefore I would not recommend to go lower than 0.4 millimeter die height in total. 
and wouldn't recommend to send any other of the CPUs. Like no 6700K, no 7700K, those CPUs are so thin that I would not recommend to send down any of those because I think they should be supported in, in the tool itself. You can just grind down the acrylic and then take a, a new zero and then it should work technically, but I would not recommend it. Talking about the, the NLAB IHS, I would absolutely not recommend this at all, simply because you leave those deep scratches in the top side of the IHS and that's something you absolutely don't want. In result, you would also have to lap the top side of the IHS and considering that on stock you have this nice nickel layer on there which can act as a diffusion barrier for liquid metal, you would lose the nickel plating and that's usually not worth it. That's why I would not recommend to use the IHS tool. Keep the nickel layer on your IHS is probably better on the long term. And also there is so much acrylic on this tool on the IHS part, you have to also send down like all the other parts and the and the lower you go, the more acrylic you have on the sides you also have to get rid of. And it takes forever, it took like 45 minutes. In general, both tools cost about 30 euro, which I think is a reasonable price considering the price of the 9900K and the risk is in and the risk which is involved in lapping the die. Especially the die tool is made really nicely. Also, I want to highlight that the scale itself is a very nice idea, but it's not that accurate. I mean, it's accurate when you have your zero, but to get your zero is a little bit difficult. You start on the die in the center, then you get your scratching marks, but you still have this convex die and on the IHS, the IHS is constantly also being lapped while you're still trying to remove the outer parts of the acrylic. Therefore getting your zero is difficult and therefore your total measurement is also going to be difficult. In case you have one of those accurate measurement devices, totally fine, then you can use the scale and rely on it. Otherwise relying just on the scale itself might be difficult. It's a very nice idea to get this tool. I think if you decide to grind your 9900K, the die version is nice and can be used very well. The IHS version, considering that you're scratching your die, not that nice. Thanks for joining in and see you next time. Bye.